with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Welcome back to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, where we are going through God's Word, one scripture, one chapter, one book at a time. And so we made it all the way today to the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis. We're almost at the end. It's taken us quite a while, but it's been a good ride and I've been enjoying the word of God. I hope you have been too. Thank you so much to all you new subscribers and you that listen in and support and leave comments and likes and all that good stuff. We truly appreciate it. And we, we hope that you'll continue to do so. We're not looking for money. We're not looking for fame or anything like that. We're looking to put this word out as far as it can go. And so you uh, participating and liking and all that stuff helps us do that. So we appreciate you. All right. So we're going to pick up today in Genesis chapter 49 after a quick word of prayer. So grab your Bibles as we talk to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity to dive into your word and to hear what it is you have to say to us. Oh God, we pray that this lesson be a blessing to each and every hearer, whenever they hear it and wherever they are when they do. We pray it as always in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we left the last study at the end of chapter 48 with Jacob on his sickbed and extending a blessing to Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And he was actually adopting those boys as his own and prophesying that they would be great. And the prophecy was about uh, uh, not just them, but their offspring the, and, and their future families that would come from them in the, and in the nation, they would be prosperous. And so here, Jacob, the man of God, who thus far has been a preacher, we even have one of our lessons called Jacob the Preacher. <laughs> he's been a preacher, he's been a patriarch, but now he begins to work in the office of prophet. Uh, he's he's uh, he, he's he started prophesying in that last chapter, and he's going to prophesy throughout this one. So this is the section of Jacob's prophecy. Uh, now, to prophesy is simply to give out what thus saith the Lord, what God has to say. Uh, we usually associate prophesying only with 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 foretelling or telling about the future. And that can be a part of prophecy. But the idea behind prophecy is simply telling what God says. That's why Paul said over at 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, he says, I desire that you all prophesy. I'm going to read that real quick. Hang on here. We're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Uh, yeah, here it is. 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow after charity, with his, which is love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries, but he that prophesieth speaketh, un speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He that prophesieth edifies the church. Paul says it's it's better to prophesy. I know we get in, we get all excited about the mighty wonders and the <laughs> the brothers who, who sound real good speaking in tongues and all that. And I'm not against tongues. That's fine. But Paul says here, the word of God says it's better to prophesy. That is to put out the word of God. And by the way, what the word of God, what God has to say is here in this book I'm holding. <laughs> I got 66 books worth of what God has to say. And these dudes running around calling themselves prophets, so-and-so and all that. Bro, you can miss me with all that. If you're not giving out word that lines up with this Bible, then I don't really need your prophecy. I got enough. <laughs> but here, Jacob begins to prophesy. And so we left off actually at the end of uh, chapter 48 last time. We're going to pick up there at, at chapter 21, the end of that chapter. And it says, and, um, and Israel said unto Joseph, behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the land of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. 
Now, two things here. He's given uh, Joseph uh, a double portion by blessing, adopting and blessing both of his sons. So his sons will receive uh, the same uh, amount of blessing as each of the individual brothers of Joseph. So that's how he receives a double portion. The second thing, there is actually no record of Jacob battling the Amorites, as he just said here. So this um, this this is most likely is pro- is Jacob prophesying about a future battle between Jacob's people Israel and the Amorites, or it could be some unmentioned battle where he took some land uh, and later gave it to Joseph. And some think this is the land referred to in in uh, Saint John chapter four verse five when Jesus went through Samaria and Jesus met the woman at what's called Jacob's well. Uh, truthfully, I, I don't know which it is, <laughs> but those are two possibilities of um, of what he said there. Now, let's move on to chapter 49. It said, and Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in, and this is a key, the last days, the last days. Always pay attention in scripture when you're reading, when you see that phrase, the last days in scripture because it usually refers to the end times and the coming of the Messiah. And you're going to see that phrase uh, very often when we study the prophets. Uh, And again, Jacob here is acting in the office of prophet. He's speaking uh, to, uh, to the people or to the sons here on behalf of God. He's speaking to his sons about themselves and about their future, uh, the future of the nation. And because time and world history will revolve around God's relationship to this people, the the future of the world is really what's at stake in what he's discussing here. So let's take a look in chapter 49. Verse 2 says, Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Listen to me, boys. Verse 3 says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might in the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Now, he starts with his firstborn, his oldest boy, Reuben. He's the oldest, and actually, as the oldest, he's the one that should have received the double portion that Joseph got, the double portion blessing. But there's a problem with old Reuben. Verse 4, he says, He's unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel, because you went up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. Thou shalt not excel. And, and earlier in the book at uh, chapter 35, Reuben goes and sleeps with Jacob's concubine, uh, the mother of a few of Jacob's other children. And it's only mentioned briefly there. It's right after Rachel passed. Um, and, 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 and Reuben takes advantage and sleeps with his, with, with his woman. <laughs> and so obviously this has stayed with Jacob. It's not mentioned much, uh, even at the time. It's mentioned just barely in passing. But this has obviously stayed with Jacob and it had to hurt him. And friends, unfortunately, there are some things we do that just follow us. This has followed poor Reuben here, this this thing that he did. Uh, Now, don't get me wrong. We can get forgiveness from God. We go to him and we can and will be saved and he'll forgive us each time. And the Lord removes our iniquities from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so he cleanses us and, 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 and as far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed us from our transgressions or our sins. But with some things that we have done, those consequences of those things will still come. Uh, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, the great radio preacher, uh, he, he, he tells the story of a man, a preacher who was saved. Uh, he he was a he 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 was an alcoholic. He was a terrible alcoholic, and he was um, you know he was an alcoholic. And then he gave his life to the Lord, and he was saved. And uh, all these years later, after he was saved and and preaching, he was having some health trouble. And and Doctor McGee asked him about it, and this man said to him, he said, "The Lord saved me, and he gave me a new heart, but he didn't give me a new liver." 
<laughs> this man had ruined his liver through his alcoholism. You see, there are some consequences uh, to some things that we do that unfortunately we, 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 de- we have to deal with and we have to face. And that's what's going on here with Reuben. He's done a horrible thing. He's matured and grown. But here at the end of Jacob's life, that consequence has come back to Reuben. And, and so he says Reuben won't excel because of this terrible thing that he did. And when you read the rest of Scripture, when you read the rest of the Old Testament, no Reubenite, none of Reuben's uh, future offspring really do anything exceptional. There's no Reubenite king or prophet because he is unstable, this unstable foundation. Uh, Reuben, Reuben uh, Jacob describes him as unstable. It is the book of James that tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in, his, in all his ways. That is uh, somebody who is unsure. Reuben is a is, is a son, but in sleeping with Jacob's uh, woman, his wife, his concubine, I should say, he's acting like Jacob's enemy. You see, he's unstable. He's a son, but he's acting like something else. And friends, it's time out for being caught between living for God and living for the world. You got to make a decision. You can't be unstable. <laughs> you have to. You have to make a decision. You're either his or you're not. You're either a disciple of Jesus or you're not. It's time to quit being unstable, because if you be for the world, fine. That's your. That's your call. Go ahead. But if you be for God, if the time is now to be holy, to put away. Uh, 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 horrible things to put away lying and, and to put away running the streets and pornography and getting drunk and, 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 and running from bed to bed and all that being unstable. It's time to make a decision. And when we get to the book of numbers, we're going to see that this tribe of Reuben decided that they didn't care about getting to the promised land. You know, they, they said, we'll just live on this side of Canaan. We're fine. We don't need to get there. They said, we'll take our inheritance right here in the wilderness they were content with the world. <laughs> That's what today's uh, uh, Reubenites are. You who are unstable, trying to live uh, for God, but uh, trying to say you live for God, but living for the world. You're unstable and content with the things of this world. Time out for that. <laughs> the Lord is on his way back and uh, the, the time is running short and it's time to make a decision. Oh, don't be like Reuben. Don't be unstable, but make your foundation on the rock. That rock is Jesus Christ. Now, let's read on. Verse five, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O oh, my soul, come not thou into their, into their secret, unto their assembly mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will, self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger. For it was fierce and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Now, Jacob is looking back to what Simeon and Levi did back in chapter 34. When they took revenge on the people at Shechem, they went down and uh, after the, the, the prince of Shechem had raped their sister, they went down and tricked and then killed every man in that city. It was a brutal and a horrible act, and Jacob again here has not forgotten it. He says, cursed be their anger. Anger will make you do some things that you never thought you would do. (laughs) Many men and women sitting in prison right now, some for the rest of their lives, over a moment of anger. It's like a fire that can devour everything. That's why the Apostle Paul warns us in Ephesians 4.26, he says, to be angry and sin not. (laughs) Now, you can't help getting angry at times, but you can help what you do about it. Simeon and Levi took a a cruel, vengeful action. Jacob says, for punishment, they will be divided, and they will be scattered. And poor Simeon's uh, people, his the people that come from him, the tribe of Simeon, become literally scattered, as we read later in Scripture. When the land is divided up in the, in the book of Joshua, when we get there, we'll see it. We'll see that they had to share with Judah. And eventually they wander off and become like a nothing tribe. They just wither. <laughs> Look what a moment of anger can produce. Uh, it, can, it can produce total destruction. It can, it can lead to, 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 to total, uh, totally being uh, scattered or, or destroyed 
just a just one moment. It's so sad, this thing called anger and the destruction that it is called. Oh, be angry, but sin not. And you see, the same thing that happened to Le- Simeon's people would have happened to Levi's people as well. But something happened over in Exodus, the 32nd chapter, when the nation of Israel was out in the wilderness and they, then Moses went up to the mountain and they said, we don't know what happened to Moses. Let's make us another God to worship. You remember that story. <laughs> they began to worship this, this golden calf. And they said, this is our God now. Well, my old Moses came back down the mountain and he, and, and, he, and he rebuked him, of course. But then he made a challenge. He stood up and he said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come unto me. And the Bible said that those sons of Levi <laughs> came over to Moses and they stood up for the Lord. And because they took a stand for God, they became the tribe of the priests in the nation for the, for the rest of its history. Can I tell you something? No matter what you have done in your past, if you will take a stand for the Lord, he will save you and he'll make you a priest too. <laughs> it was Peter who said that saved folks are a royal priesthood. Levi had been cruel and Jacob pronounced judgment on him and he would have received that judgment But then he took a stand for God. (laughs) And when he came over to God's side and took a stand for the Lord, that was enough to save him and save those people. The past didn't matter. The killing of those folks wasn't an issue. They took a stand and God saved them. And you listen to me now. I don't care what you did. Come to God's side right now. Take a stand for God. Now, I know what I said earlier. I know there are some things you have done and there will be consequences that you and you've got to pay for those. And and let me tell you whether you come to God or not. That's true. (laughs) But if you will come to him, you'll be forgiven of your sin and cleansed of your iniquity and you'll have God with you no matter what you go through. But the key is coming out and taking a stand for the Lord, taking a stand for God. Now, taking a stand for God means first repenting turning away, putting away those things that are wrong and sinful, putting away, like I mentioned earlier, drunkenness and alcohol and lying and greed and sin and standing, standing for God in righteousness and holiness. I'm sorry these preachers have lied and and made you believe that you can just live any kind of way and be for God and you're standing for God. No, sir. Like the tribe of Levi, you have to take a stand for God And that's taking a stand against sin. You see, Simeon and Levi commit the same awful sin. And this judgment from Jacob is for both that we're reading about. But later on, this people of Levi turned to the Lord, stood for God, and they were blessed. What a word that is from from Jacob here. Oh, this Bible is amazing. (laughs) That's why we go through the whole thing, because you can see the picture as it expands. You can see the the, the effects of sins, small decisions or decisions that seem small and minute and don't make, make a difference right now. In the long run have destructive consequences. Oh, it's just one night out. Oh, it's just one time doing this. Oh, it's just one smoke. Let me tell you something. The long-term consequences are never worth it. So I make an appeal to you. Stand for God. Stand in holiness and stand in righteousness and do it not in your own power, but in the power of the Holy Ghost, which he will give you if you'll turn to him right now. All right, we're going to cut off and pick up again next time. Until then, hey, thank you so much for listening. God bless you.